Let's get started the afternoon session. So I'm Zheng Zizhao from User Engagement Group at NERSC. And I'm going to give this uh, short talk about how to use VTune at uh, NERSC. Okay, so VTune is a, an Intel profiling tool. And the focus of it is uh, basically it's on node performance. So, but it works with uh, both serial and also parallel codes. Um, so it provides both uh, command line interface and also the GUI. So on a like more uh, generic Linux cluster, you would use like a, uh, the VTune GUI to, to run your performance analysis and then also display on in with the GUI. But in our case, um, we recommend to use a command line interface to collect data and then later display on the uh, you know on a on a login node. So the reason we do that is uh, uh, because in in our case you may run like a lot of large scale jobs and be, use a lot of node counts and then um, it's not easily handled by you know interactive run. And another a uh, little bit more technical issue is. Uh, uh, actually, after we switch to Slurm, now it is easier to run GUI, but uh, it has a little bit historical thing. Uh, back when we ran Torque Moab, actually the GUI didn't even work on our computer node that time. So, but anyway, this is our recommended way. So you run the command line and collect the data, and then later display on the on a login node. So for those people connecting to NERSC, like from remote sites, then we recommend to use this NX to speed up the X11 um, applications. So basically, you can see pretty much faster uh, the, the graphical display. Uh, so actually, if you are very far from NERSC, you may see the big delay in your graphical display, but to use NX basically that solves that problem. So the VTune is available on Cori as a module, like all our uh, other software. So our current default is 2017 update 2. Uh, the reason I'm emphasizing the, the version here is because VTune keep changing its interfaces and how it looks and how it, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> display and, and s stuff like that. So, and also the analysis types can, you know, they can add uh, more, more and also rename and those type of things. So the, the result I display in this talk, actually they all from um, VTune 2017 update two. Okay, so in this talk, my focus would be just um, uh, provide you a step by step, you know, uh, the, uh, just to provide you how to run VTune on Cori KNL nodes. And then the rest of the thing, I, I would uh, uh, consider that's your homework to do. So basically, uh, I'm just talking about how we how could we tune get to run on our systems because we have nurse custom you know stuff when entered the you know the custom stuff you need to do um, to run this application so first uh, you need to compile your code with a debug flag minus g over there and then another important thing is you also need to link the code dynamically which in our case, our default is static linking. So you need to use this uh, compiler wrapper thread minus dynamic, and then use them with our compiler wrappers to build your application. So once this is done, um, then you can run. But there are a couple of more notes for this compilation stage. So you can see um, we recommend this debug uh, dash debug inline uh, debug info is, is uh, you know to be used. The reason to add this is you know in the, in the code compilation some of the codes are inlined, so it will if you use this flag then you will be able to 
get the you know more information from the inline the codes. So another thing I want to mention is <coughs> uh, many of the profiling tools, uh, debugging tools, not the profiling tools. The debugging tools usually ask you to turn off the optimizations when you try to use their you know tools. But this one, uh, it's okay. You don't have to. So uh, the you know you can just keep whatever you use for the optimization flag in your in your normal use of the code. And then, uh, although this is not required, but uh, Intel compilers are recommended. So it should work with other compilers, but uh, because this is Intel product, I believe these are most, mostly tested with Intel compiler. So uh, this is um, just an extra thing we want to recommend. So make your life easier. So sometimes we run into many things. Actually, it's not you know well tested. So this is recommended. And the other thing I want to uh, I forgot to mention is um, so the static build is not necessarily like uh, it it may work, but uh, we see many of the case like uh, we've seen that called the seg fault if we if you build a static uh, you know binary so that's just a note so the the way to compile code this is uh, i just take a skeleton code is really small code you this is um, a hybrid mpi open mp code so you can compile like this so as helen already showed to compile for knl you can you need to swap the Default loaded CrayPE Haswell module to a CrayPE Mike KNL module. And then, as mentioned, use dynamic and then use this minus G. And then also, I used this debug inline uh, info option and use this to build your code. And then, to run Vitium, here is the NERSC customization. So, you need to use the SBATS directive called dash dash perf equal to vtune. This is a very important flag you have to use. Uh, under the hood, what this flag does actually is just to tell the batch system to prepare nodes for you so that those nodes can do the, you know, whatever vtune tells them uh, to do. So basically, it needs some, vtune needs some kernel drives to be loaded so to be able to collect some hardware um, uh, event-based you know, profiling data. So that's uh, the requirement. But the reason we want to do this dynamically is because um, actually Vtune um, is, is touches like a very lower level stuff. So we often see that um, it, now it's much more you know, stable, but when we first uh, use this on Cray systems. We often see that it kills nodes and very fragile, you know. So some of the kernel modules that we can use, we don't want them to be loaded by default on all the, you know, computer nodes. So this is the way we manage uh, the VTune. So it's like you start a job, load those kernel modules, and when job quits, then those load uh, modules will be removed. <coughs> and then another thing is you need to load the Vtune module before submitting jobs. This is actually new addition uh, is because now we support multiple kernel drivers on the computer nodes. So you, in your, before submit the job, you need to load a, a Vtune module so that uh, the, the batch system can load the corresponding uh, kernel drivers. So this is uh, recently added. And another thing is, uh, is last, uh, you have to use a last file system. I'm saying it's not necessarily last file system. Temp is fine too. It's just a memory. That's fine. But the reason here is our global file system actually uses Cray's so-called DVS layer to access the, uh, to access them. I mean from computer computer node to access those global file systems. But this DVS, uh, it, it does not support all the you know, memory map function and map function. So something just doesn't work. So 
uh, this, this last file system is required. You have to run Jab, VTune Jab out of this um, last file system. So now the newer version of VTune actually reports. So if you run that on the global file system like uh, project or like home, it will give you a nice informational message and ask you to switch file system. So this is much better. But back in earlier time, actually, it just uh, failed and with some misleading messages. But now it's much better. So here is the commands uh, that uh, you can type. So uh, just to get a directory in the, in the last file system and then load the module. And then I'm, I'm taking an example, uh, like using Celloc, so to run the interactive VTune job. So after you get the computer nodes, then uh, inside the job, then on the computer node, then these are the commands you need to type. Say module load VTune. Probably this, this can be skipped because you already loaded from the outside. But uh, and then let's say this is uh, the example I'm getting here is uh, open MP, uh, MPI hybrid code. So we need to do this affinity uh, thing here. So we put these two environment variable there and how many open MP threads I want to use. So put this here. And then the S run command line is the same as you would normally run a code, but before your executable, this jack that dot x, this is your uh, executable. Before that, you put this vtune uh, command line. So those are uh, ample xecl and then minus collect. So after collect, this one comes, uh, this is analysis type. So now this line x tell, tells vtune to do the memory analysis uh, experiment. And then the minus R tells where to store the result. And then this trace MPI is actually is needed for the uh, MPI code so that um, they have one for each rank, it will have one profiling data, one file to store the profiling data. And then uh, here are a, a couple of tips. So for to run, I mean, to collect data, actually, uh, VTune by default, it would do automatic finalizing data, which means once it collects raw data, it will process it on the, uh, before quit the job. So here we have extra option here. So finalization mode equal to no, uh, equal to none, means we want to, we don't want to do any uh, post processing after the raw data collected. So the reason we do this is because a single thread speed on KNL uh, is much slower than like a login node. So we, if you do this on the computer node, it, it will take a long time. Basically, you can say it's uh, two times slower on, compared to the Haswell. So <coughs> we move this, we defer this to the, you know, we just collect the data and then do this outside of the batch job. Okay, so another option I want to mention is this minus data dash limit equal to zero. This one means we want to uh, collect infinite size. I mean, whatever the, you know, the, just, the, just the, you know, collect all the data. Otherwise, the default is 500 megabyte, which means uh, we tune would stop after, you know, data reached the five megabyte size. So for the real application code, probably you run into this, um, this limit very soon. So actually for the, I will show you some result from the uh, material science code called the VASP. And then we see that before any iteration enters, then it already reached 500. So you may need this for your real runs. And then, uh, these are another command I would like to mention. So you can see the help information. So let's, let's say if you want to know um, what type of uh, analysis available, then you can type ample CL help and then collect. 
then it will show all the options of this command line interface and also the, the types, the analysis types available. So actually for each analysis type, actually there are further options, something called knob option. So those will fine tune your, you know, what kind of data you would collect with, um, uh, with your experiment. So you can see this ample help collect and analysis type, something like memory uh, access, then you can see all the available knob options for memory analysis. Uh, type <coughs> experiment, yeah. And then, so let's say, just to show you what ki kind of analysis are available, just to see here we have uh, this advanced hot spots. You can see later what it, what, what it looks like. But the names are pretty much explains them, it tells, you know, what, what they are. But I think the most uh, interesting one actually like advanced hot spots and general exploration and memory access and also this HPC performance one is a really good one. Actually this is the uh, result of a NERSC request so it's uh, they didn't have this in the I mean earlier version but they added this per hour request. And then uh, something like uh, after you you know something like this knob option for the memory access. So there is like a knob analyze mem object equal to two. Actually, this one is critical actually, but unfortunately I forgot to add that in my experiment. So this one, what it does is just to map the the object with the memory, you know, operations. So if if OS sees some big operate allocation goes on they can map that to the specific object, but I, I didn't include in my test, so I, I'm missing that data. But anyway, those are optional you can um, add per your, per your need. So if you want to run batch jobs, then this is the example. So you, if you want to run on cache mode, uh, just request this node and then just uh, provide this ample uh, the waiting command line, use this to collect data. <coughs> so once the data is uh, collected, then you can using you can use this waiting GUI on the login node, you can display the result. But to display, actually if you um, open, you just run this ample GUI command, you run you run this command after you load the module, waiting module then from the, the main display, you can see there is a link called open results. So you click this, then you can uh, find what it, where is your result file is, and then you open it, and then it will display the result. So if the data not yet finalized, then upon the open the, the file, the GUI would finalize first, and then load the result. Or you can do the finalization outside of the GUI, so by just run this command, finalize and give the finalization mode to full, then you can get uh, uh, the data finalized. Okay, so next I will give some examples of what the, the VTune collects and what the, the in GUI interface looks like. I think this one is is good to uh, do a little demo over here. So now I have um, I have an application uh, called VASP. I just mentioned it's a it's a big code at NERSC. Um, it's actually it uses uh, uh, the most computing cycles by the you know we we rank the code how they use our computer time and this one is the top one. And then uh, I'm going to show you, so the, the test I run with, with this. So once you open the GUI, the, the interface would look like this. And then you say open result, you click this. So I already opened, so I, I want to skip that. Or maybe let's do that. Let's close that memory thing. Uh, <coughs> Uh, 
I think these are the result, memory, you say open. So this is, this, you know, the raw data has been processed. So when you open the result, first nice thing you would see is it tells you this is memory, um, uh, this is memory analysis. So here it says this view um, uh, is how did this collected, and then it says use this to identify the potential memory access related issues. And, uh, you know, there are more. So it can tell you what this view provides and then what you can get from this display. So let, we can let it go. And then you can see the, the first one, this is a summary view. Uh, it summaries, you know, all the things, something like here, so elapsed the time. This is the time used for the, uh, the wall time used by the, by the code. And then, actually, this is a very well optimized code. So you can see, uh, <coughs> so if this is not um, very well optimized, you could see multi multiple flags. So something like here, this is uh, the red flag. We can see only one here. It says uh, uh, it has a high L2 miss. L2 misses. So the nice thing about VTune is you just uh, move your cursor onto the whatever, you know, things show up in the interface. So let's say L2 miss bound, this is what they use and then they explain what it is. So the, the L2 miss bound metric shows a ratio of cycles spent, spent handling L2 misses to all cycles. So it defines what it display. And then it, here it shows how to improve it. So it says you consider um, here say what it is and then the potential way to improve this. So this is a um, very good part of uh, VTune. So the other thing you can, f you can see from the summary report is bandwidth with utilization report. So from here, this is a histogram. So what it shows is, uh, this is the elapsed time, the, the vertical axis, and then here is the, it's, it's a show here, it's in gigabyte per second, so that's the unit. This is a DRAM memory uh, bandwidth utilization. So that means this graph says the code uses like one gigabyte per second bandwidth for the most of the execution time. So if you put the cursor here, you can see bandwidth utilization is, this is one gigabyte per second. And during, you know, 92 seconds, the bandwidth utilization is, you know, one gigabyte per second. So you can see even more, like uh, about here, you can see three gigabyte. There is only like a few seconds, it spends like three gigabyte. It uses that many bandwidths. And here you have opposite, now we have a multiple hierarchy of memory structure. So you can see uh, this one actually I ran as a cache mode. So you can see it shows the memory utilization for the MCD RAM. So you can see at one, it's like maybe less than one second. It has, uh, it reached like uh, almost the, the theoretical peak over here. No, it's uh, four times, no, it's much lower than theoretical. It's a 400 some gigabyte per second at least. But at least we see at a certain point it reached like a big bandwidth usage, but it's lower and going down. But still the majority of parties using like not big of bandwidths. And then there is a bottom up view uh, which provides more detail about the, you know, the, this test. So, <coughs> so you can see here, the, this is the bandwidth for the DRAM, and then this is the time series. So this is along the execution time, what is the bandwidth utilization. So you can see from here, DRAM, you know, I, I believe this is the initial stage where 
uh, we tune try to set up the test and then from here it shows the you can see cursor will tell like on package zero uh, this is a DRAM total uh, at this point it says uh, the memory utilization is uh, is less than one gigabyte per second this is the bandwidth is used and then it also gives a read write and also give the MCD run the result and and things like this. So lower part here, this is a CPU time. So let's say if you don't know what the CPU time you know they use um, defined, then you can go back to the original summary form. There you can actually you can see that they even define such a you know ap appears like a really obvious one, but they do define what what they are. So, but anyway, we go to this view, and then you can see this pink pink uh, cell here. Actually, this is the the place where we tune thinks the the bottleneck is. So you can see you you hang the you put the cursor on it, then you can see what it explains what it is, and then how you can improve it. So here is the the memory view, and actually. I can show you one more thing, like something like this HPC performance characterization view. So from the summary, you can see CPU utilization is 17. This is a flag over here. So the reason it gets a flag here is because a VASP cannot make use of the hyper-threading. So if you use hyper-threading, it's much slower than it should. So we have in total 268. Right, right? <laughs> what? 68 times 4, yeah, we have that many. Uh, 272 cores, yeah. We have that many cores, but we use only 64. So we think thinks the utilization is poor. So it gives this, but this is uh, nothing we can do about that. It just, uh, it's the algorithm, it's the nature of the code. It just doesn't work well with hyper-threading. And then we go down to the, the lower bar, lower place. So it shows the memory utilize bandwidth and then the memory and cache utilization over here. So we see the same, this is the same uh, system, but I ran multiple times with different analysis. So you can see similar report over here. It said, uh, L2 misbound is, the previous one shows 24%, this is 23 But anyway, it shows this, and you can also get DRAM, MCD RAM's result. And here it also shows this CMD instruction per cycle um, thing. So the, the one interesting measure over here is something called the packed CMD instruction. So this one actually, uh, use this measure, you can see how code is uh, CMD vectorized, how well the code uh, is CMD vectorized. You can see this is a pretty well um, vectorized code. Actually, VASP, you know, developers, they did a lot of work on, uh, you know, to vectorize this, this code. So we can see the result over here. This is a pretty high, I think. So you can also do the bottom-up view and something like this. So I, I run out of time, so, but the last thing I want to mention is uh, there is a, the VTune sometimes appears a little, you know, evolved. So if you don't want to pay uh, that much of a learning curve, then another easy one you can try is a so-called application performance snapshot. So this one is a, is a recent product. It's still under uh, beta testing. This is open software actually provided by Intel. And this one has a very nice, you know, easy to use, but provide basic information about how code performs, you know, information, something like uh, CPI. CPI means the cycle per instruction. So if this number is high, that means there are many stalls in the code execution. So that's not a good one. So it, it flags over here. And then also something like uh, it anal analyzed the MPI time, open MP in balance or not, a balance or not, and then back end stalls and CMD and memory footprint and even including I.O. So I think this is a 
really good you know, high level overview for the code performance. So to use it, you just uh, you know, load the module, run this script, and then here you, at runtime you put this script in front of your executable. So the only extra thing required is link dynamically. So that's the extra effort to use this. Okay, thank you for your attention. <clears throat> so any questions? Hello, so my name is Thomas Koskela. I'm a postdoc here at NERSC and I'm going to talk about another Intel uh, performance tool, Intel Advisor, and in particular about the uh, new roofline features that have come up in the recent versions of Advisor. And uh, I just want to thank Zahar Matvev from Intel, who's one of the main developers and he's working quite heavily with us to develop and test new features of Advisor and he has provided me with a lot of material that I'm going to show here. So, uh, so I'll go in a bit of a reverse order. I'll have an, I have examples at, at the end, but I'm first going to talk more high level about what you can do with Advisor. So, so Advisor has this, uh, it's, it's basically a tool for uh, in vectorization efficiency of your code, although it's kind of spreading in other areas as well. Uh, it has these five main uh, uh, steps. The first thing, and that is probably what, what most people will be happy with, is, is it uh, sort of provides you with compiler diagnostics and performance data from your application by, by loop and by source code line and t gives you information about how well you're vectorizing, why it thinks you're not vectorizing, why your vectorization efficiency might be poor. Uh, then the second step is it gives you some advice on, on how to fix, your, fix issues that it finds based on what, what Intel thinks is, is a good way to vectorize code, uh, it, which can sometimes be useful. It can tell you things like uh, you have a dependency here that's preventing your vectorization. You, should, you can remove it easily by doing these transformations. Uh, and that's, that's basically like the basic usage of uh, Advisor. Then you can run additional uh, diagnostics to collect uh, trip counts and flops and that basically gives you an idea of, of your, the absolute performance of your code on, on the system and that's tied to the roofline analysis that I'm going to talk about in just a moment. And then you can do even more detailed analysis like uh, dependency analysis or memory, ac memory access pattern analysis. Uh, so the basic workflow goes something like this. So you start by compiling your code and what Zhenqi said about compiling for VTune is basically true for compiling for advisor as well. I think you can run it with, with static linking. I've, I've done it and it hasn't been giving me problems. Uh, but you run with, with minus G and, and all your optimization flags on. To obviously you need that for vectorizing and so you compile your code, you run a survey, you get some information from the survey, you might go back, change things in your code, run again uh, and, and work in this first loop for a while and then if you, after you feel you might need more information you can go into this uh, a deeper analysis, like trip counts, dependencies, memory access patterns, but all of these will, will run on the same binary and, and on the same uh, advisor project, uh, they like to call it. So you will just be adding more information to the, to the same data set that you're collecting. Um, so this is a snapshot of the summer first step and what, what you will see 
when you open up a result is is a summary so there are tabs on the on the toolbar that contain different things but the summary will give you an overview about the performance of your code so so some things are similar like it will give you it will tell you your cpu time but then you get metrics like how much of your code execution time is spent in vectorized code, how much is spent in scalar code, and then how well are your vectorized, or is your vectorized code vectorizing, so how much of the vector uh, processing units it's, it's actually t using. Um, then you will, you will, so it will select some loops up here that it sees are taking up most of your time and give you some additional information and so you can basically in this interface you can you can click on this and it will take you to the source code give you more details line by line um, this bottom part here is is comes after you've run the memory access patterns i'll talk about that in a little while uh, then what you can do here from here is go to the survey report and it will give you more details on, uh, on a loop by loop basis. So this, so advisor likes breaking things up by, into loops and so it marks which of your loops are vectorized with, with an orange color and scalar by a blue color and then for the vectorized loops it will tell you what is the vector efficiency here on the left? Uh, then it will tell you what vector instructions you're using, how much it thinks you're gaining performance from vectorization, what ve is your vector length, and then on for the loops that it thinks are not, not vectorizing or are vectorizing inefficiently, it will give you some uh, explanation why, why this is not vectorizing and maybe what you can do with it. So again, there are links here. You can, you can click and it will take you, take you to, to more detailed advice. Uh, then the other part of this uh, is actually you have another row of tabs underneath here. So you can, go, you can go to the source code of each one of these loops and it will give you by line some of these same metrics. Uh, I wanted to highlight here the, the code analytics tab, which is which I like a lot. So it gives you some some analysis on your on your co um, for the loop in a sort of compact way. For example, it analyzes your your instructions, how what fractions of your instructions are spent accessing memory or computing or Maybe a, maybe a mix of those or something else. Um, and it gives you a nice summary of, of basically all the information that is here, that is here um, on, on the upper row, but in a, in a sort of clearer fashion. Um, so, so from here, you can, you can mark the loops you want to do deeper analysis on and then run run those analysis. So for example, the, the memory access pattern. So this, so the basic survey has a pretty low overhead, so you shouldn't see more than, uh, than let's say, less than 50% overhead to the, to the execution of your code. The memory access pattern and uh, dependency analysis have huge overheads, so you want to be a bit selective with what you run, the, run these on but you can mark the loops that you think might be interesting for this analysis and, and analyze them. And then he, in, here's an example of the memory access pattern. So it will go through your memory accesses and it will give you the ratio of, of unit stride, fixed stride and uh, irregular stride accesses. And, and well, basically for vectorization you want to unit stride as much as you can, so you want to see as much more more blue here and red is is irregular accesses which you 
basically want to get rid of. Um, and again, it, it will, you can go into your source code and see where these accesses are happening and, and maybe uh, like figure out ways how to, how to eliminate them. Uh, so this is a quick summary. This was a quick summary of, of what you get in, a, in an advisor survey. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the roofline feature. So, so the roofline is, is this performance model that uh, basically gives you, an, gives you an idea of the absolute performance attainable on your system. And then based on some uh, measurements of your application, how much of that can you expect to achieve? So uh, on, the, on the plot here, on the left, it, I'm, I'm showing a cartoon of the performance bounds of some system that has two levels of cache hierarchy and, and DRAM, and then is capable of doing scalar FMA and, and SIMD computations. And, and basically, these, these lines here give you performance bounds that are set by the system. And the x -axis, so the y-axis here is, is performance in gigaflops per second. And the x-axis is arithmetic intensity, which basically means how many flops you can compute per byte you move from memory. So if you need to move a lot of bytes from memory per flop, then you're, you're in this area where the lines are tilted, and that means you're bound by memory bandwidth here. And then if, you, if the opposite is true, you're, you will be just bound by, the, by how much flops the processor can, can uh, compute, and, and you'll be here in the compute bound region. You, you might notice that there's this quite large region in between where, it, where it's a combination of two and you need some more detailed analysis to, to actually figure out what's going on. But that's where advisor can help you. So, okay, so this is basically a bit of bit more motivation. So, so you essentially you, you might want to think about using the roofline model if you have this kind of question. So you, you have an application, you've manage to speed it up and you want to know, well, okay, can I speed it up further or is it running as fast as it can? Or you, you read from, from the uh, vendor specifications that this uh, architecture can give you two teraflops per node and you're wondering why you're only getting one or less. Um, and then the other uh, sort of branch where this can help is if you're, if you're trying to decide uh, what kind of optimization strategy should I choose for my code? So should I work on vectorization, parallelization, uh, memory alignment, stuff like that? So, so that's where, where we have been using the roofline model. And, basi and basically, so what you do is you, you measure these, these lines of, that, of the system, and then you instrument your application, you place it on this plot, and you try to analyze what is the limiting factor. So, and like I said before, usually it's not straightforward. So, so you might you might get get a, get an in a, in some cases special cases you might analyze your application. It will sit here on the memory bandwidth DRAM memory bandwidth line and you will say, oh okay, so I'm bound by DRAM memory bandwidth, so I need to improve my my AI to get more performance or to reuse my cache better to get better performance. Uh, uh, basically the lower here you are, the more room you have for optimization. And then the kind of optimization depends on how close you are to the memory bandwidth limits. So whether you need to work on, on improving cache optimization or vectorization, for example. Uh, so, so what advisor can do, because in order to, to place the application on the roofline plot, you need to, so you need to know how many flops per second year the application is computing and how much 
data it's moving from memory. And an advisor can do both of these for you and, and plot the, your application on the roof line. So, so I have an example here from advisor. And this is something you also find under the survey tab. So you go, you go to the survey and then in 2017 and, and newer, newer versions, you will have a tab here on the side that says roofline. And when you click on it, it will take you to the roofline view. Uh, and it also, what it does, so it, it runs a micro benchmark to measure the, the system you're running on. And from there, it gets these, gets these roofs. And then it uh, instruments your application. And it instruments it by loop and puts each one of your loops on the, on the roofline plot. And, uh, and you can customize this a little bit. So you can, you can set uh, thresholds for different sizes and colors. So the, si so the size and color of the markers here are, is showing which ones, which loops are taking the most time in this particular application. Uh, you can hover over the, over the points like I've done here and on, on this red point and it will give you the, the numbers basically. So it will tell you how many, how, how many flops it's computing, what's its arithmetic intensity and how much time. Um, and then you can, you have a view here that, that takes you to the source code. Uh, so you can, you can look at the source code, you get some, uh, some of this information again, line by line. And, and you can, uh, try to analyze your code through that way. Uh, there's a histogram on the right that shows you uh, how many loops are are spending uh, uh, like the how many loops are spending uh, a given fraction of time so so from here we can see that there's one red loop that's spending a large fraction and then a yellow loop that's spending uh, 18 18 percent and the rest is is close to close to zero um, Okay, so what so what it's what roofline and what advisor is doing to, to compute this roofline is it needs to measure the the time it takes to run your application and it needs to measure how many flops the application is computing and it needs to measure how many bytes it's it's moving from memory. Uh, so so this is done in in two steps. So the survey collection of, of advisor counts the time, and then you need to run a second collection, which is trip counts, that counts the flops and the bytes. Uh, the, the flop count, on, if you run this on KNL, it is mask aware. So on KNL, so if your code is not using all the vector lanes, some of them will get masked out and you, you risk overcounting the flops. Uh, but, but what advisor is doing actually is because there is no flop counter on the KNL, it's, count, it's, instrument, it's counting the instructions and working out the flops from there. And, and it's also taking into account the masks um, okay, so when, so you place, you collect this information, you place your application on the, on the roof line. So what do you do with this information? You, you, you should see whether your application is compute bound or memory bound, and that should give you some idea of what kind of optimizations you can apply to that application. So compute bound applications generally benefit from, uh, parallelization and vectorization and memory bandwidth bound application from cache reuse and, and memory alignment or, or, use, or the uh, high bandwidth memory on KNL. Uh, so, okay, so I'm gonna go through now uh, step by step how you run advisor 
to get the get the survey and the roof line and so the first thing you you need to do is load the advisor module and that should set the paths to the binaries then so we recommend running advisor on the command line and then viewing the results from the GUI basically in principle the GUI also lets you run the executable but to do that you'd have to run the GUI on the compute nodes and that's uh, cumbersome so we don't really recommend doing that uh, so the so the command line uh, interface to advisor is is called this advixi dash cl and the syntax is similar to vtune but not exactly the same so you can also get a lot of information by by typing advixi cl minus help but uh, but to to do the collection you just specify dash collect survey and specify the directory and then give it your executable and that's it. Uh, so this, this first step is to, is to basically obtain sorry, the, the times spent in different loops and then the sort of the vector performance metrics and this should run very quickly on most applications. Uh, there are a few, few extra tricks you can do if this is taking a long time. Um, so contact, get in touch with us if, if this seems like causing, is causing huge overheads. Uh, then for the, for the roof line, the next step is to collect the trip, run the trip count collection. And you run, you run the trip count collection using the same uh, directory for the, for the output for the output, which is called project dir here. And the important thing is to, is to use this flops and masks flag if, if you're running on KNL to accurately count the flops using masks. And, and this, will, this will count the, the flop counts and the AI. And this has a bit higher overhead so I expect it to take something like three to five times the normal runtime. Uh, and once, once this is done, then you, you should have all the information and the roofline plot should be uh, uh, available in the GUI. So you can just go ahead and start the GUI on, and you can either give it your, the project directory as an argument or click, uh, like click on, on open results and, and navigate to it. Uh, the other, another way to view the data is if you don't uh, want to use the GUI is using uh, this uh, report survey flag on the command line and that will write out everything that all the information in the survey into a CSV file that you can then open in whatever uh, text editor or, or uh, sort of spreadsheet software you like. And, and that's, that's the basics. So if you want to run this on, a, on, an, M, on, a, on an MPI uh, application using, or using our, our Slurm scheduler, it's it's not that different. The on, only uh, thing you have to remember is that you have to call srun on a, on a compute node and, uh, and then give the, no, your normal arguments to srun and then just put uh, advisor as the executable and then give your executable as an argument to advisor. Uh, like like this example show here so so otherwise this is pretty similar you might also want to add the data limit flag to so so if you set data limit to zero it basically means that there is no data limit advisor can can write as much data as it wants or you can set it to a large number like 10 gigabytes or something like that if you're worried of 
filling up the file system. Um, okay, so that should be enough to to get started with advisor. So there's I've, I've collected some links here. Uh, so the first one is is our NERSC advisor page, which is actually really good. There's a lot of good advice in there, and then uh, I've got a couple of papers about the roofline, and then a lot of Intel and uh, NERSC resources on on using advisor. So that's all for me. I can take questions if someone wants to ask questions. So one thing I saw is it mentioned that the profiling was user level and was not using performance counters. Right. So if you have a application with a difficult to predict amount of communication volume that's using caches, but perhaps it's, you know, Indirect accuracy is maybe not as obvious. Uh -huh. Will this still work, or will it not be able to measure the air mag intensity? Uh, so, so oh, that's a good point. So, the so the what what the current versions of of advisor mean by arithmetic intensity is uh, is all the data that is that is moved from any level of memory hierarchy into the uh, processor. So it's you could you could say it's an L1. Uh, arithmetic intensity, so so it will collect everything. We're we're working with Intel very hard at the moment to get a version that would count the arithmetic intensity just for traffic out of DRAM because that is more likely a bottleneck. Is yeah more likely a bottleneck. I'm, well, I mean these two have sort of different uses and and they're actually both sort of they complement each other, but. This seems to be more difficult for them to implement, so so it's. I hope it will come in in future releases. They have a beta version that's kind of working at the moment. Mm 